Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stores, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure How great the pain of searing loss The Father turns His face away As wounds which mark the chosen one Bring many sons to glory
Our dear Heavenly Father, the head of our family, in your infinite wisdom, you design and establish a family in the human race. As your children, we begin to learn to worship you and love one another in this small unit of society. Thank you for securing our families, even with the surge of cases of COVID-19. Thank you also that we belong to a bigger spiritual family, our church, where members can afflict one another in prayers and encouragement. We are indeed blessed to be your children. As we read about the increasing number of frontliners infected with COVID-19, we cry out to you, dear Lord, Please have mercy and heal these doctors, nurses, and other hospital personnel who sacrifice their lives in order to save lives during this pandemic. We pray for protection for the many drivers delivering our orders of food and other necessities so that we can stay home and be safe. We also pray for our church members or their family members or relatives who have been infected with this dreaded virus. We plead with you for your healing touch and provisions. Thank you, Father, as you are our anchor and hope. In the midst of sufferings and uncertainties, we declare with one voice that we will rejoice in the Lord. We will be joyful in God our Savior. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, Church. At this time, two of our newly married young couples of our church who heeded the call of God to serve in full-time ministry would like to impart a few words to us before we will pray for them. Hello, good morning, USB family. We are here today as a couple who are heeding our call of serving God full-time missionaries in Davao region. Just as how Christ spoke of who God is, the God who would not let anyone to perish and willing to leave the 99 for the lost one, will follow his example. Our work as missionaries involves CDE or community development and empowerment and partnering with churches towards missions mobilization. We do this because we know that the wholeness of the gospel of Christ involves the fullness of men, both spiritual and physical. We would like to thank UECP as well as UECP Mission Board for supporting us in our calling. We would also like to ask for your support and prayers and encouragement as we go to the field. We know that the task is not easy, but with your partnership with us, we know that uh, it will go beyond our capacity. This is Nikolai and Jennifer Arquiza, the couple that you support during our uh, youth days in the ministry and the couple that you are supporting during our seminary training. And we hope that the couple that you will be supporting also during our full-time ministry. Thank you and God bless. Good morning, UECP family. I am Emmanuel Lau. UECP has been my spiritual home and family. They have helped me grow deeper in Christ. I am grateful to God because He used UECP Mission Board to support me in my seminary training from 2016 to 2020. I graduated from Asian Theological Seminary this past June, and with the help of UECP family, I will be serving the Lord full-time in UEC Palawan. I praise God because He used UECP to mold me to be the person I am now. Please continue to include us in your prayers as we adjust and transition to our new area of ministry. God bless you all. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks as we pray for your servants, Pastor Nikolai and Sister Jennifer, Pastor Eman and Sister Christine, whom you raised among your people and set apart to do your will and ministry to which you have called them. We thank you, Lord, even for your blessing that rests upon them. At this time, we humbly pray that you bestow upon them by your Holy Spirit your anointing that they be faithful to your word and to the ministry entrusted to them. Grant them open doors of opportunities to witness and proclaim the glorious riches of Christ in us as you bestow upon them your wisdom, your strength, and your guidance as they give their best and invest their lives for the furtherance and expansion of your kingdom. Father, empower Pastor Eman and Sister Quislin, Pastor Nikolai and Sister Jennifer to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord our labor is not in vain. We ask and pray with thanksgiving in the mighty name and precious name of our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A blessed Sunday to all of you. I hope 
and pray that all of you are safe, in good health, and following the minimum health protocol set by our health official. Today is August 16, 2020, and it marks the fifth month of our community quarantine. Sadly, 10 days ago, August 6, 2020, the, Philippine has, the Philippines has overtaken Indonesia in the most number of positive COVID cases. A study made by the Independent Polling System of Society, or IPSOS, a market research leader, you know, and they did this study on the life of the new normal among the six ASEAN countries. And you know what they found out? No? They had made two study. Unang una, 94% of the Filipinos are worried that they might catch or they might acquire COVID-19. And the second, 38% of the Filipinos claim that their household income nabawasan by more than 50%. Well, some of the obvious reasons would be why. What? No? Yung mga businesses, no? a lot of them are closing and more will soon be shutting down. In the business world's economy section, it says, ang daming mga Pilipino are unemployed. And two days ago, I checked the Dole website. It says that 136,000 OFWs have returned and have been uh, nadala na sila sa kanilang respective provinces. But the sad thing is, most of them no, don't have any jobs to return to or it may take a while for them to find one. The best things, even the best things of God, that God gives us, like marriage and family, are not free of trials. Christians are not exempted, no? And my marriage and my family can attest to that. I can even observe that from the couples who are joining our couples group, no? There's pressure, no? There's pressure really working from home, no? And even, no, stressed out from being out of work. There's a tough decision that needs to be made. Whether gusto natin mag-homeschool, no? Or gusto natin na for this year, postpone muna yung kanilang pag-aaral. Some couples have to be physically separated from each other because of work. While others feel the tension because they are confined together in a small space for a long time. No, young people also feel depressed and lonely as they use social media, maybe because of comparison trap. And there's a lot of emotion going on. May iba nga, paranoid, no? uh, that they have to deal with every day no? as the day goes by. So what can we do? No? What can we do? Well, we must be, we must be careful. No? We must be careful because we must not let this season of difficulty no, we must not let this season of difficulty be no, the only thing or be interpreted as the only thing that our journey with God is all about. No? Huwag natin akalain na ito lang yung mapapala natin in our relationship with God. And if there's one thing I want you to remember, it is this. My faith in God impacts my emotion and action. Let's say this together, church. My faith in God impacts my emotions and action. Now, let me give you a quick background on what's happening. Kasi si James yung nagsulat nitong passage na to eh. James was writing to the Jews who were scattered all over the world. No? Just like us, UECP Church, we are scattered in different homes. No? Nagkalat-kalat lahat tayo. And his purpose was to give hope to provide words of encouragement so that they can endure their trials. Alam nyo ba, trials varies. They come in different kinds. No? May iba marital problems, may iba family problems, may iba work-related problems, others health problems. And they come in different intensity. Some Problems are less severe while others are more severe. No? 
it comes also in different frequency. May iba, araw-araw, puro problema. May iba naman, no? two months or six months or once every year lang. Also, trials have varied duration. No? May iba, sandali lang yung kanilang problema. But others would take a long time for them to be able to resolve a particular trial. So, this morning, the question that we will try to answer about trial is this. No? How can we have a faith that perseveres through trials? Again, how can we have a faith that perseveres through trials? Well, there's three ways. And let me share with you the first way. No? The first way by which our faith can persevere through trials is by having a joyful attitude. I'm sure all of us have different reaction when troubles or trials arises. No? May iba sa atin, takot. Others, anxious. Or some other gets angry. No? Others are dumbfounded. Natutulala na lang sila. Some spend sleepless night wondering. No? While others, parang mantika kung matulog. No? Some try not to think about it. But when they are all by themselves, no? you'll notice tears dropping from their eyes or flowing from their cheeks. And may kita mo yung expression of despair. And these emotions... My brothers and sisters, are normal reactions. No less than the Apostle Paul could attest to the difficulty of going through such trials. Yet, sabi ni Paul, even, no, even if I am poured out as a drink offering. Now, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng drink offering? At that time, si Paul alam na niya, feel na niya na mamamatay na siya. And yet, even if he knew that he was going to be poured out like a drink offering, alam mo na sabi niya sa church niya, I rejoice and I share my joy with you. Now, church, when Paul was saying that, he was not drunk. No, hindi siya lasing. He was not hallucinating. And he was not having mental problems. From Paul's point of view, Joy is not dependent on the situation. Even if he was in prison, even if he was about to die, he can still find joy. Joy exists and thrives, even in times of despairs and adversity. And that is why James also gave us this command. No? Very specific yung command ni James. Very specific, very decisive, and very urgent. Sabi niya, church, yeah, you need to do this right now. Be joyful. Or this is what you need to have in your mind. Have a joyful attitude. No? But to have a joyful attitude is not a matter of feelings. Kasi pag feeling lang yan, in a matter of one day, two days, or a week, wala na. But joyful attitude is a matter of the will. Now, how can we have that mindset? No? Now, I want you to remember this. No? Number one, no? kailangan we have a settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. No? In Tagalog, ano ba assurance? Assurance means may katiyakan, may kasiguraduhan. No? We have an assurance that our Almighty God is sovereign. No? Second, no? we have a quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. No? Meron tayong sinasandalan. Meron tayong pinagkakatiwalaan. No? And uh, saan tayo nagtitiwala? Where do we put our confidence? We put our confidence in God's Word. We put our confidence in in God's promises. Because God is not a man. He does not lie. He is not human. He does not change His mind. Lahat ng promises ni God will always be fulfilled. And the last is a determined choice to praise God in all things or in all situations. No? When we 
uh, trust God, no? There's no circumstances that can steal our joy of thanksgiving. You know, when you say, we, I would have that settled assurance, when you say, I would put my quiet confidence in God, when you say that I would have a determined choice to praise God in all things, no? you're looking at what? You look at God's character, God's promises, God's purpose. Church, Christians are not a bunch of religious freaks that finds pleasure in pain. But the reason Christian choose to be joyful is because we have a confident trust in God's character, in God's promises, and in God's purpose. Alam nyo, my son is a resident doctor, no? or in today's vernacular, frontliner po siya, in one of the private hospitals in Metro Manila. Now, during the early part of the lockdown, my son was fortunate enough Kasi sabi niya, he was placed either in the general cancer or cardio wards. No? Where in my son's own terminology, sabi niya, pa manageable pa yung place of work ko. Compared now, no? where he would describe his place of work as toxic. Maybe because of the surging number of patients and probably because of the hazard and contagiousness. Daily, we hear about doctors and nurses being infected and some dying. So, you could only imagine what is going through our hearts pag naiisip namin siya. So, how does my wife, no? how does my wife overcome yung kanyang mga nightmares and sleepless nights? How do we, as husband and wife, as parents, follow James' command? to consider it pure joy when we face trials. Well, these are things that we do and maybe this could also be your application. Number one, cast our cares to our God. No? We cast our cares to our God. We love Kurt. No, mahal namin siya, but we also know that God loves him more than we could ever love him. And so, ang ginagawa na lang namin, we put our cares to Him. Lord, you love Him more than we loved Him. And so, please take good care of Him. Second, no, sabi nga nila, a joyful heart. A joyful heart is a grateful heart. Sa family namin, we have an app. It's called Life360 app. And there, makikita namin where our sons or where our children are. And so, alam namin from this time to this time, Kurt is at St. Luke. And then from this time to this time, nandun na siya sa kanyang condo. And every time when my wife sees na nandun na siya sa kanyang condo, she would give a word of praise to God. Lord, thank you for keeping him safe. Ako naman, I'm the designated driver. And so every time when I pick up my son from the hospital, no, he would share to me, Pa, alam mo, nag-rapid test ako. No, nag-swab test ako. And it turns out to be negative. And so we would just give thanks to God. Thank you, Lord, sa protection mo. Again, cast your cares upon God. A joyful heart is a grateful heart. My faith in God, my faith in God impacts my emotions and my action. How can we have a faith that perseveres through trials. Again, number one, have a joyful attitude. Number two, by understanding, no? by understanding the purpose of trials. Now, refinement means trials test our faith. Now, gold is refined in many ways. And one of the ways that gold is refined is a chemical process called the Miller process. And how does that happen? Well, it involves a stream of chlorine gas being blown into a molten and impure gold. And when, ha when that happens, the impurities are taken away from the gold 
and it becomes 99.5% pure. Alam nyo ba? The way God will refine us, the way God will extract the impurities is by sometimes blowing streams of trials and impurities to prove the faith that we so profess is genuine. You know, God tested Abraham's faith. No? Tinest siya yung faith ni Abraham. Hindi yung sinabing, Abraham, paliwanag mo nga sa akin, what is faith? Explain mo nga sa akin, what is faith? No. no. God tested Abraham's faith by, allow, by allowing him to prove by his obedience. Jesus Christ regularly tested his disciple. There was an occasion when a large crowd was following Jesus to a mountain. No? And at that time, no, kawawa si Philip. No? Jesus tested him. No? Pero alam na ni Jesus kung ano yung gagawin niya. But he tested Philip. Sadly, Philip failed the test. No? Sabi niya, Jesus, yung 200 denari is not enough to feed all of the people. Sadly, Philip looked only at the material resources no? instead of trusting that God will provide. Now, I want you to listen to this. No? God doesn't tense, test us to see how strong our faith is. Kasi God already knows. No? He knows that. The reason why God tests our faith is so that we will know how weak or how strong our faith is. Sabi nga ni Craig Groeschel, no? a faith that has been tested is a faith that can be trusted. Now, refinement is just the start because the goal of refinement is the second purpose of trial, perseverance, no? which means that trial produces perseverance. Now, please remember this, no? It's not just the test, no? It should be what? Kailangan papasa ka sa test. The successful passing of your test produces endurance. Ayan. Now, what do I mean by successful passing of your test produces endurance? Well, I think all of you, all of us know, as Christians, we know from our experience that as we endure and successfully pass yung mga difficulties and trials natin that comes our way, no? our trust in the Lord not only becomes stable, but all the more, it becomes stronger and stronger and ready for the next testing. You know why? Because endurance increases no? each time a trial is patiently and trustingly endured. And as we no, successfully endure itong mga trials and testing na to, we will, you will, come to know God in a new and deeper way. Alam nyo ba? Abraham started knowing God by knowing that God is his shield. Kasi God was there to defeat the four kings from the east. Later, he knew God in a different way. God was his El Shaddai or the God Almighty because there was an instance na sabi ni God, in your old age, no, bibigyan pa rin kita ng anak. And later, at Mount Moriah, he learned God in a deeper way. No? He knew that God is Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees to it. In each of those testing, Abraham endured and Abraham learned more of God's character and his personhood in a new and deeper way. How about you? No? As you have successfully passed some of God's tests, what were some of God's character that he has revealed to you? Was he the God who heals? Was he the God who comforts? Was he the God who is gracious? Or is he the God of the impossible? Finally, no? 
we need to understand also the last purpose of trials, no? So refinement, perseverance, and then the last, the last one is maturity, no? Maturity, uh, as the verse says, is to be perfect and complete. Now, when the Bible says perfect, especially dito sa passage na to, it doesn't mean that after the successful testing, eh, we will become morally and spiritually perfect no? or sinless. Because that is not the case. No? Kasi sabi ni James, no? James even admitted that we all will stumble in many ways. So ano bang ibig sabihin ng perfect and complete? Well, like I said, perfect and complete is about maturity. Meaning to say, as we successfully pass the test, and as we persevere and endure, no, this will help us to become more mature, more Christ-like. Likewise, no, in marriage, as we desire to build a stronger no, relationship in marriage, we will experience many trials and testing. And we should not only be aware of that, you have to expect that the trial and testing will come. And the most common issues, no, as, we, as we talk about in our marriage preparation classes, money problems, no, pera, daily stress from work, no, busy schedules, no, and even poor communication. No. Also, you mga subtle things like difference of perspective or difference of opinion. If neglected, no, could be a major source of quarrel and conflict. You know, one husband shared to me, no, sabi niya, that many times in their marriage, no, it's the small things, the small stuff that he overlooked, that he dismissed, that affected their relationship. No? When their thoughts were not aligned, no? anong ibig sabihin nun? He thought that this would be beneficial for them. Pero his wife, no, hindi pala opposite dun sa opinion niya. And you know what he needs to do? He has to make a conscious effort to understand her. And how does he does that? He would pause, turn to her, look, and listen. Now, there was an instance in their conflict. Siguro grabe na. And he went to the comfort room daw and umiyak siya dun. No, he cried because according to him, it seems na yung way siya is tama and yung ways ng kanyang spouse or wife is mali. No? Then, no, later, he realized that both of them were partially right and both of them also were partially wrong. And so in humility, in love, this husband chose to fix what's wrong with him. After accepting his shortcomings, no, it not only brought their marriage peace, but according to him, that particular dinner time, nagkaroon po siya ng happy meal. Ayan. So mga couples, no, that's why it's very important in marriage to have an open communication. Remember these three powerful words, help me understand. No, help me understand. Try to be caring also. No, remember these four caring words. How can I help? We can endure. No, we can endure by seeking relief from his words. We can endure by seeking godly guidance from mentors. And we can also join a support group. No? like the couples group that we are facilitating every Saturday, no? which help everyone, young and old alike, to realize that what? What you are experiencing, normal pala, lahat ng mga mag-asawa, dumadaan dyan. And when a couple successfully go through those testing, you will come out becoming more mature, becoming more Christ-like, and you will be able to use those experiences to mentor others as well. You know, prior to the lockdown, the early part of the year, no, nagkaroon kami ng talk, no, 
a couple's talk in Baguio City entitled A Love to Last. And we talk about how to manage, no? or mga different stages pala, the different stages of marriage. And we divided that into the different rings of marriage. No? Alam niyo ba yung different rings of marriage? Well, let me share with you. The different rings of marriage. Unang-una, you have engagement ring. After that, you have wedding ring. No? Tapos, ayan na, hindi na kayo magkaayos-ayos. So there will be suffering. No? And then, torturing. No? Pero, like I said earlier, those are part of trials. So you need to what? Kailangan you have to endure. Kaya enduring. And then, you would persevere. Kaya persevering. No? And when that happens, no? as a couple, you be- become more Christ-like. Kaya maturing na kayo. And finally, you will use those experiences that you have to mentor others. Kaya mentoring. Let me ask you, no? let me ask you, do you want the Lord to greatly use your marriage? Sabi ni Tozer, no? God never uses anyone greatly unless He tests them deeply. My faith in God impacts my emotion and actions. Again, how can we have a faith that perseveres through trials? Number one, have a joyful attitude. Number two, understanding the purpose of trials. And the last one is what? By calling on the Lord. And by calling on the Lord. Now, when James say to call on the Lord, hindi siya nagsasuggest, ha? Hindi rin siya nagbibigay ng advice. He was giving a command. By asking God means kailangan we need to continually, regularly, habitually call on the Lord. Now, he also described our God, no, not just any other God, but He is a giving God. No? And how does God give? Well, God gives generously. No? And generous is defined by this, no? singleness of heart, of doing something unconditionally, without bargain. No? Singleness of heart, no? singleness of heart, of doing something unconditionally without bargaining. Sa Tagalog, todo bigay. Todo bigay. And this is our God. No? I remember in Matthew, no? chapter 7, sabi niya, if you sinful men could give good gifts to your children, how much more yung Father nyo in heaven who would give, who would certainly give good gifts to those who ask Him. No? Ask God. Ask Him constantly, regularly, habitually. And not only does God give generously, He also gives without reproach. No? Anong ibig sabihin ng without reproach? No? God will not reprimand you. God will not criticize you. Sa Tagalog, anong ibig sabihin yan? No? Hindi yan sabihin, ikaw na naman. Hingi ka ng hingi. No? Last week, humingi ka lang. Ngayon, hingi ka na naman. God will not do that. God is a God who gives generously and He is a God who gives without reproach. Now, from the giving God who gives generously and without reproach, He then reminded them, no, sabi niya, when you ask God, huh, you need to ask God without doubting. Now, Paano natin, how do we understand asking in faith without doubting? Well, there are two ways of understanding that. Number one is the belief that God will grant our request. Pag nagpray ka, sigurado ako, bibigay ni God dyan. No? The second is this, God can grant our request. Which reminds me of a story. No? When Jesus approached a leper, and sabi niya, gusto mo bang gumaling? And the leper answered, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And this is how we should understand 
asking in faith without doubting that we believe that God can grant our request if He wills it. But, of course, may but, di ba? But if God, in His manifold wisdom, no, chooses not to grant our request, maybe, just like Habakkuk, just like what Pastor Willie read earlier, no? ano sabi niya? Though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olives should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock should, not, should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stall, yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet, I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Of course, finally, sabi nga ni James, when we call on the Lord, no, sana we do not have, wag tayo magkaroon ng double-minded. We should not doubt because pag tayo nagda-doubt, we will become unstable. No? And if this is our man- mindset, then sabi ni James, don't expect God to answer. As I end today's message, no, maybe some of you are in this initial stage of testing. Maybe some in the middle or some in the latter stages. Some of you may be discouraged or depressed because of your situations. And some of you may feel that your trials are so hard that you're thinking of surrender na ako, ayoko na. But you know what? Maybe you just need to get your bearings straight. Maybe you need to focus on God rather than on your problems. Alam nyo, maybe God is giving us a Goliath problem because He wants to bring out the David in you. So, why don't I give you two minutes no? and allow you to, at this moment, no? you, can, you can sit, you can kneel down no? and allow you, no? cast your cares upon the Lord and ask Him to help you pass the test that you are currently in. Ask God who gives generously and without reproach and ask Him without doubting. Let's do that now. My brothers and sisters, how can we have a faith that perseveres through trials? No? Unang una, have a joyful attitude. Number two, no? Ex- uh, understand the purpose of trials. And number three, by calling on the Lord. My faith in God impacts my emotions and actions. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. And I truly pray, Lord, for all my brothers and sisters who are listening this morning. We, some of them, are going through some forms of trials and testing. And hindi ko po alam where they are right now. But Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will strengthen them. Your Spirit, your words will encourage them, for them not to lose hope, for them to continue to cling on you. Because Lord, we have a God who is a giving God, who gives generously, and who gives without reproach. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your message. Guide us. Be with us. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
UECP family, brothers and sisters, peace be to you. It has been five months since the government announced the lockdown. Our lives has been affected and it can be said that we are entering into a new normal. Are you used to this new normal? Many of us can wait to come to the church for worship and fellowship, to meet and eat, to chat with each other. But as we assess the situation, 
the number of people infected is increasing. The pandemic is not yet under control. So physical gathering are still not possible. We must wait patiently and continue to trust in our Lord. It seems that this pandemic has prevented the expansion of God's kingdom because the, clo the church has been closed down. But I'd like to remind brothers and sisters, we have to know one thing, that the church did not close down. It is the church building that is closed. Instead, we can see the church of God entered into a new mode because it has reached and penetrated into many different families. Through technology and internet, God's ministry not only continues, but also extends into a wider and farther place. This is something that many people did not anticipate, but God knows it because He is in control. Just like the Bible says, neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let me encourage brothers and sisters to join us in the different gatherings that we have designed for everyone on the internet. Every Sunday, we have three service, worship services, English at 8.30. Mandarin at 10 and Hokkien at 10.15. We also have Sunday school through Zoom. Now, during the week, we have English prayer meeting every Tuesday at 8 in the evening and Hokkien prayer meeting every Friday morning at 7. Aside from the many life groups that are going on throughout the week, we have line up webinars once a month and also other special topics that will, uh, will be covered. Our adult ministries have a Caleb Fellowship every Tuesday at 9 a.m. And we have Bible studies at 3 every Thursday. These are mainly in Hokkien. Our China ministries have, has a small group every Friday evening, children Bible class and youth group on Saturdays. We also have English and Tagalog language classes. All of these are conducted through Zoom. Now, once a week, we publish on our Facebook the intercessory ministry prayer items, devotionals, and also life group materials. So I encourage each and every one of us to find groups that suits you and come and join us. Also invite your family and friend to attend. Also let's pray for our many co-workers who are behind the scenes. They really put in a lot of time and energy so that we can learn and worship online. Not only must we continue to grow spiritually, but we must also show the love, the peace, and also the grace that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us as we extend it to our family, to our friends, our relatives, our neighbors, and also our community during this extraordinary period. So that they can experience our God, our remarkable, our sovereign God, that they will be willing to come to Him. We must always remember the mission that we receive from our God, that is to love God and make disciples. Lastly, we still have to remember to take good care of ourselves and also of our families. Stay home, wash your hands frequently, maintain good hygiene, and also practice social distancing. Together with God and with each other, we can overcome and be victorious in this pandemic. May God's peace and grace be with you. Now, 
to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. May the love of God, our Father, be with us, and the grace of Christ, our Savior, be with us, and the faith. Speak.